let's try one while I'm chopping these out. So, just to show you, and I'll do a whole one in a second. Um, what I do is I come in, and I'm just using a, a cheap Stanley. I just put quick edge on it because this is pine. It needs to be sharp. I'll come in. I'll show you in the next one better, but tap out, do some relief, tap out, do some relief. Just don't want to go past your uh, knife line. So I'm just going to put you up here just so that you don't bounce around on the bench. Hopefully it's good. So I'm just going to hog this one out and uh, then I will, uh, I'll do a whole one in a second. I've already done two of them. It only takes a second. So. I'm using an inch chisel so it's not going all the way across. Oh, actually, inch and a quarter, sorry. And then what you want to do is you want to hog out enough material so that your bevel on your chisel isn't hitting over here and keeps driving you back. As long as you get a good shoulder on the edge right here, that's where your wood's going to rest, so it's not really a big deal. You can undercut these, but you know try to get them as close as you can. There'll be some, some fitting involved. You know, I always spend uh, probably one afternoon just spinning joints. If you can keep, uh, you know, a garbage pail underneath you, keep you from making a mess. But these hardwood floors actually clean up pretty quick. This is the reason that the back of your chisels need to be straight. Back of your plane irons don't have to be flat, but the back of your chisels do. And I'll see if I can show this for you. So. What happens is when you're chiseling, use the back of the chisel as a reference point. So, as I'm going down vertically, I want the back of the chisel. So I can, it's kind of hard to do both here, but I want the back of the chisel to register. Wow, it's weird. It shows a weird angle. Right against the knife wall on the way down, and I can tell... See, right now my chisel is perfectly vertical, and because of the video, it shows that it's not. There you go. Um, I can tell if my chisel's not chiseling straight down because it'll come away from the edge. If I'm undercutting, it'll start to cut out versus being perfectly flush like it is now. And that this camera just works. Oh, there's the camera. That's better. So if you can see that, how it's perfectly flush against the edge there. If you start, when you're chiseling down, if you start to chisel funky, it will gap open. So you want, uh, that's why the back of your chisels need to be flat, because we use them as a reference surface for telling when we're doing work like this. And again, you learn what vertical is, and right now my chisel is really perfectly vertical. Just, it's just a weird way that the camera is. So basically I'm hogging out so that my bevel doesn't hit in here, taking out the waste. And then going straight down until these break break free. And hopefully you can see from there. Kind of get to where oh, whoa, 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 fall over. Okay, so it's right here. Hi. Yeah, that looks good. Alright, so I'm just gonna finish this one off and then I'll do a whole one really quick. So I like to hold it vertical like this and even sometimes you get my thumb on the inside holding it again you know tight against the shoulder once you get down inside quite a ways like i am now you can really wrap on it which is why i'm using these because i can hit them with the metal hammer rather than some of my other ones that are they've got wooden handles and stuff that i have to be using a wooden mallet this is just hogging out material so it's not worth using uh you know better chisel the other thing you want to be cognizant of is make sure that you constantly clean underneath because if you get these chips under the wood they'll put dings in the bottom of the softwood like this and you can feel when i go down i can feel if it's uneven i'll catch on something like i am right here now just push down and shave that off because this chisel's sharp. 
If I see these move, I'll give it another whack. See if they'll just break right free. But they're not right now, so I'm just going to take that little bit more in there. They should break free on the next one, really. I'm pretty close. Again, these don't have to be perfectly flat all the way across in this application because it's essentially a through mortise. So the wood's going to register on both sides. So you just want this side, you know, the edge and the edge perfectly flat. The middle, the middle can be undercut just a little bit so it's not going to like I said, from my experience, there's going to have to be some fitting anyway, so I don't try to I don't have to try to be perfect with this. That's why I'm using these chisels and beating the crap out of it. Also, if you just saw what I just did, you probably should just, in good practice, try not to do that. Try not to wedge with your flat side up against here because you put dings in your edge. Try to work it from this side. You can put the dust back and then just kind of rock it in. And then uh, after I get all four of them out, I'll just check the, check and make sure straight across that it's, you know, straight down all the way across. But I guarantee I'll be pretty close. Showing really good right now. The first one cut good. Try not to um, don't do this. Try not to leave your chisel on your bench and wipe shavings away. That's when you're going to cut yourself more than almost any other thing in my shop is swiping shavings away and hitting my chisel sitting on the bench. So that's why the center gaps in here. Should be using it or like a dog hole. But I, this is what this is here in the center of my bench is a tool holder. Just ran into my hole pass. And for this, I'm not using the hole fast just because I don't really need to. I was working pretty quick through the other two. So, what we do on to start. Is I put this right in the knife line and on one side obviously pinch it with my fingers down here make light tap I don't want to go too deep or I'll walk the chisel back past the line and just rock it over in the line until I'm to the other edge and then we're going to take out the waste in front on the waist side just kind of walk it back and forth to walk right out I'm going to do this a couple times until I get deep enough to where I'm confident that my chisel is not going to walk past that knife line. Because the bevel on the chisel, this part, as you're hitting down, is driving the chisel this way. And actually, in um, for this application... You could go at this bevel the other way and set it like that and beat it down and then chisel out and then beat it down and chisel out. You could do that if you uh, felt like it, but I like working on my uh, procedure of keeping the um, using the back of the chisel to register to make sure that I'm right going straight down.
and you don't have to hit these with a hammer if it's sharp you can just walk it in like this by hand you can put the bevel down and tap it off if you want you just don't want any wood in there to force the chisel backwards or then when you get to the end and you put your piece in here it'll be low on the top if anything, you want it high on the top and you have to point it down just a little bit. You can take pretty big chunks out of this. You'd be surprised how much, how much material you can move with a chisel really quick. You can come in a lot, come a lot further away at a lot shallower an angle take pretty big chunks out, move pretty fast. And as you push it down the wall, I keep my thumb against this side. You can feel if it's going straight or if it's hanging up, which is what I just did. And then I, I felt it hang up and I just pushed through whatever was sticking out. Make sure there's nothing underneath it real quick. I'm getting pretty close. Should come right out here in a second. Registered nice and straight here so I can make a good straight blow. I felt like it walked in a little bit. Oh, yeah, I forgot the center. I didn't knock out the center. <laughs> Starting to bend out. I'm just going to go from the other side real quick. Just make sure that I line up my cuts. Make sure there's nothing underneath. A couple of nice. Hold my thumb against the edge so I'm registering it perfectly straight right against the wall. So then what I'll do after is I'll just check these with a, a longer chisel to make sure that the uh, chisel's registering on this edge and on the far edge perfectly flat and it will show me if something's up like let's just say I don't know if you guys can see how good you can see this but if it's up like that there's a bump in there and I'll just take the bumps out. So this one's uh, all cut. good illustration of um, how you can undercut it if you see the see that chunk that tore out in the middle right there that means nothing because the boards are going to be registering you know out here so before I get into another one I'm going to get the chisel I'm going to sharpen the chisel real sharp fast and show you how I do that just get you over here I'm just going to do this real quick I can, uh, it's pretty it's pretty sharp now but what I'll do is I'll dull it it's a sacrilege 
Okay, so I just ran it across that stone on the tip. It's, it's amazing that it's still pretty sharp, but. This is all it takes. This one does have a little bit of a micro bevel on it. Make sure this thing's clean. Been sharpening a lot. So all I do is I grip the chisel like this, these fingers on here. I'll cut my bevel like that, rock up into my micro bevel. almost all the way across. It's kind of weird. I can actually feel the mica bevel. This would have been a lot quicker if I just felt like leaving it the way it was, but it, the bevel was kind of crooked, so I just fixed it. Just take off my burr real quick, nice and light, so that you're not scratching up the bottom with big scratches. You're just working on taking off. Let's see if you can see this. If you can see the edge right there, just where I just took that off. This is flat, but that was just um, where it honed off the burr. You could go to town on this and make sure it's flat. The problem is, is that now you're making a bunch of real big gouges with that diamond plate. But I got burr back around to the top now. I'll show you what I did, why it took so long. If you look at my micro bevel, how even it is right now, it wasn't before. It was, it was thicker over here and it was thinner over here, even though I had a burr. So I just evened it out really fast. Right to my finish stone. Do the same thing. I can feel my micro bevel. You could do it one handed if you wanted to. You can do figure eights if you want to. I prefer two hands in circles. Circles make the stone cut much, much finer than just going back and forth. If you go straight back and forth or you put it in the jig, let's say, oh, it's nice and polished. If you put it in the jig <coughs> and you roll back and forth, what you're doing is whatever grit stone that is, you're putting that size grooves right through the edge of your, your blade. So that's why you have to use so many grits and why you have to go so fine. If you use circles like I do, you can sharpen something with a lot less grit because you're not putting those fine little grooves right straight through the edge. Polish it up a little bit from where I hit it real hard on the diamond plate. Now, if I'm working like I am right now, I'm not stropping, but uh, if I can find some hair, let me get this on. I'll spill my dip cup. If I can find some, where are you? Oh, there you are. I can find some hair in my arm. I didn't strop, but as you can see, pulling the hair up. Oh man, let me get here. Shaving my arm, even with this. Let's see. I don't know if that's showing up. I hope it's showing up, but anyway, sharp. So even for this cheap, uh, you know, Stanley construction chisel without even without stropping, it's got a beautiful edge on it. It's fine. 
you know, you could go further, but I want to go back to work. So oh, that's it. Stick that thing in the tool holder right there. And I cut the next one. So you know, one down, three more to go. And we cut the overlapping joints on those and those. And the top part of the base will be done. Uh, and then I just got to make the crosses and the long stretcher. And I'm going to do a through pegged, uh, through wedged mortise for that. So uh, that's it. Thanks. Hope everybody's having a great day.